It's time for the next episode of Live by Heart Today with your host, Don Spiegelberg and Wendy R. Wolf. Hello and welcome to the Live by Heart Today show number 24. This is a show designed to help you navigate change, uncertainty, and the world we found ourselves living in. We'll talk a little bit about science. We'll talk a little bit about how our body works. We'll talk a little bit about intuition, and we'll talk a lot about transformation. Today's theme is realizing your goal. And with me for today's Heart to Heart is my co-host, Wendy R. Wolf, professional transformation facilitator. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Dawn. This is basically, our, our last show was uh, choosing your goal. This is basically part two. And I really love this realizing word. Um, for me, it means both letting it dawn on me, unveiling this idea or this possibility, and then making it real, bringing it into the world. And as Rusty, our producer, was saying, realizing, making it real for your eye. How fun is that? And for your I as in the I am, right? Mm -hmm. But also for your I because as we talked about in the last show, if you don't know what your purpose is, then you don't know where to contribute. And your eyes are looking for where you can be of service, where you can help, where you can give back. But if you don't understand between your two ears what you are to do, then your eyes aren't going to pick up the opportunities that are just waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it reminds me when I was a teenager and I was like, there's so much need in the world. There's so many places to give money, time, energy. There's so much need. And um, an older friend of mine, a close friend of mine really helped me with this. She's just like, what is really, what is your heart's desire to give? Where is that? give there. Mm. And every, mm. everyone does that. All the jobs get done. Because otherwise, I get burned out. I get run out of money. I run out of energy trying to help everything and everyone mm. with no focus at all. And it's not led by my unique genius, my unique ability to ha help. So when I'm focused, when I have those goals, I can be asking and receiving and helping in these directions it really makes a difference. I want to I want to talk about that idea of unique genius uh, because you mentioned being burnt out. And when I look at people in their unique genius, for example, my mother has been playing the piano since she was three. And she's played for years and years and years. And she never gets tired of it. She's never been burnt out from playing the piano. So if I'd just like to say, if our, um, if people watching are burnt out, then their energy is going towards something that you, you have to keep refueling, right? And you have to purposely refuel. But when you're living your purpose, there's no end to your ability to do that. I, I never hear anybody burning out from living their purpose, truly. Yes, it fuels us. It, it gives back. And I was just reading this great book, uh, this great sales book um, over the weekend. And it was is speaking to this. And I recently had a friend of mine um, reading healing and reading, encouraged me about it. It's like doing, doing my work, I get fueled by it. But if I'm doing it with the wrong person or for their wrong, if, if it's not suited for me, that person, for whatever reason, or their goals aren't suited for me, then it becomes work. Yeah. And I come out of it with less energy. And so learning to really pay attention, this is one of the ways, hello, right here, to notice where our purpose is. It's like, what actually fuels me? Because that's a, those are signs to the purpose. Because if, it, if it's like, oh, this is my purpose, but I feel like somebody kicked me all day by the mm. end of the day, mm. then, then that's something to look at. It might be the and wrong I, vehicle, right it, purpose, wrong vehicle. Exactly. Because you know, I do get burnout out on working so much, but the working isn't, you know, that's the business side. Mm. 
the actual work that I do is just so exciting. I would pay to do it. I have paid to do it. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> You're living your purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So where were we? <laughs> well, well, last show we talked about mission and vision, right? Mission is where you are now and where you can serve now. And vision is where we're headed, you know, sort of the general direction we're going. And I just wanted to um, point out that as we live our lives, um, there are transitions. Often we become more and more clear about what we're supposed to do, where we're supposed to go. And it's the baby steps that we need to take to get us moving in the right direction. So we mm -hmm. have to take the first steps. Even if the first steps are out my front door, if I wanted to go to the grocery store, I got to leave my house. Mm -hmm. And so often people will say, I don't, well, I don't know where to go. And, and, but they're not even willing to open the front door and, and step outside. Right. Mm -hmm. So they might not know they need to go to the grocery store, but they certainly know they need to go. Right. Yeah. They, they need to move. So mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that during these moments, um, pivotal, where we have to take the thoughts, the ideas, and then take an action toward toward that goal, toward that um, vision for ourselves maintaining neutrality because that's a transition and you know transitions are uncomfortable if you've got back pain standing up may be difficult mm -hmm. and right that's a transition um sitting down may be difficult those transitions are what make it hard so maintaining neutrality during the transition from knowing what your purpose is or knowing what your goal is and where you're headed to actually taking the action toward that goal that's a transition often left out mm -hmm. yeah and i just want to aside and say um uh, an old christian paradigm about this is people used to say god can steer a moving car like oh it, yes yeah like just get going move movement is healing by right. the way, movement is change, movement is healing. And we can always change direction once we're moving. So just getting moving is really helpful. And that's, um, that's where a lot of us are stuck. I mean, that's where a lot of the work that I do is with where we're stuck, where we're held, where we're stopped, where we can't, can't go, can't have, can't allow. So anyway, that's where a lot of the work happens as far as I'm concerned. Is it? Yeah. And stuck is stasis yes it's stasis it's low energy mm -hmm. um, and it can it can feel confronting to go like that's part of what the resistance and the being stuck is change is, is not easy it change is not easy and speaking of which transitions i i just really have to own and i've talked about this kind of thing before i have trouble with transitions I, my body doesn't like transition i like to be where i am I like to do right. I'm all about inertia, but when I when I allow shift, then I can have better. Like we went away for a long weekend to the mountains this past weekend. It was we hadn't been because it took us hours and hours and hours to get there. Um, I was used to like being in Seattle. I could be there in a couple hours, you know, way mm -hmm. in the deeps, and it took a long time. But and then I was there, and we were there for two and a half days, mm. and. Um, it was worth the discomfort and the packing and the unpacking and the figuring it out and the finding the plate, right? All that transition, blah. but it was worth it. <laughs> so um, with regard to something we discussed in our last show, which was, you know, dying to ourselves a little bit at a time, what you're describing is giving up the time it took to get there right? Being willing to sacrifice, being yes. willing to give up the time to travel in order for the experience of being in the mountains. Yeah. With all the vitality and gorgeousness. and sweet. So for every yes, there is a no. And for every no, there is a yes. Yes. Amen. And what a blessing it is. So, so like to keep that in mind, like it's worth 
is it worth for me? Again, with the goals, is, is it worth for me? Is this worth that? It's going to cost. Everything costs. Is it worth it for me? Yes. So I let go mm. and enjoy the, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the, you know, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the angst. Enjoy the finding. You mentioned that hindrances, right? Transitions can be difficult. And mm-hmm. um, transition is one hindrance. Um, mm-hmm. We can talk about, you know, the Bible said, if you had just a little faith, you could move mountains. A mountain would be considered a hindrance. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what, what mountains, what hindrances do we have? What hindr- hindrances do we see are are present and just the idea that you don't know your purpose is a hindrance Mm -hmm. so yeah let's talk about getting over hindrances dealing with hindrances yeah and another thing when you were talking I mean I have a list of them right here that I have like it's like again it's the stuff of most of my work but am I looking at what doesn't work or what does work? Am I looking at the mountain of aggravation of change or am I looking at the incredible panorama of what I get when I do change? Like, Uh, so I'm about realism. I really, I'm not, I'm not one of those just have to think positive people. I'm not, I like to be in realism and then what is possible from there. But what, but do I want to choose, oh, what's possible? Oh, that's going to be such a pain. Or do I choose, oh, what's possible? I get to be in the nurturing arms of mama nature all weekend. Like, this is really important, I feel like. And to be able to, okay, I'm choosing to stay home because I just don't want the hassle. I'm choosing to go because I want the, the goods. So that's just one thing. Do I have my eyes on what doesn't work or my eyes on what does? Mm. And you can see in the world how, um, you know, people want what other people have without knowing what it took to get there. Yes. Right? People want, so if you post your photographs and everybody's looking at, oh, how beautiful, how beautiful your mountain excursion was, but they don't see the photos of you having to pack up all the food and your tent and you can't find the poles and right? And they don't see the hours of driving and they don't see the bumper to bumper traffic because we don't take pictures of those things. Right. <laughs> no <pictures laughs> of those things. Yeah. Right. So they, they want your mountain, they want your view, but they're not willing to do what it takes to get there. And I, and I, a, a woman once was sharing with me, oh, you have so much you know, you have this beautiful house and a husband and beautiful children and, you know, your work and blah, blah, blah. But she didn't see what it took yes. for me to get there. She didn't know that when I was in college between semesters, I was working at Burger King, right? She didn't see all these things that I sacrificed, yes. all, this, all the decisions that I made to get here. She's just looking at the here and deciding yeah. she wants that, right? Yeah. She wants and she can, she can create that. She can, but it takes a minute. Yeah, but people don't believe that they can, right? Yeah, people say, oh, you have this, and I want that too, but I can't yeah. have that, so now you shouldn't have that. What? Yeah, and that, that what's possible, for me, for me, for me, for me, that's the whole point of this whole show. What's, is it, what's possible? What's possible is the thing for me. And so, yeah, it, you want a beautiful family? Go for it. You want to be, and like, yes, there's things in the way. It's hard. How many times yeah. did you have to not leave? How yeah. many times did you have to, you know, whatever? <laughs> well, you know, when you're talking about kids, how many diapers did you change? How much vomit? How many teeth did you sit up all night because, you know, they're crying fussy baby? I mean, the list goes on and on. You have an entire lifetime of, you know, did your kid break their arm? Did they, it's an entire lifetime and you can choose to look at the downer stuff. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is as a realist, 
that you see that that's a part of the journey and you choose the journey even with that. Yeah. And then, then, and then can I choose it with joy? Aha. Uh-huh. You know, and then this morning, because we were off road, like off road all of, over the place. And then this morning I wake up to a, you know, a, a tire that won't work on my car and I can't go to the next thing. Cause I, you know, there's a staple in it. One of those big staples, ah, which I got off road, you know, it's just like, it, it doesn't end, but is it worth it? Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So there's that. Where do we put our eyes? What do we choose to focus on? Am I going toward the goal or am I avoiding the pain? And this is, am I avoiding the pain? This is the, what we talked about last time. Am I willing to, to die and resurrect? Am I willing to let go? Um, or am I just going to stay stuck here? You know, that brings me to uh, discuss forgiving myself. Because I don't always make the right choices. And yeah, I want what someone else has. And I see the truth of my life. And some parts of it are just, oh, can I trade this in for something else? Um, But when you say, look for the joy, it reminds me of the gratitude movement, right? The gratitude movement was, can you be grateful for what is around you, for what exists around you? Do you see the things to be grateful for? And when I'm, when I'm in the vibration of forgiveness, and I'm talking about forgiving myself, forgiving myself for the thoughts that I'm not great at cleaning house because, oh, I've got dogs and I need to wash their blankets because they're stinky. You know, I've got children with socks in the corner. Then I've got my own things, you know, my own laundry to wash and to fold and put away, right? Yeah. Can I forgive myself for when things don't look the way I really desire them to be? Mm -hmm. And be grateful for having the house. (laughs) Yes. Be grateful for having the children. Be grateful for the dogs. Be grateful for the hikes when we're all out together. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And, you know, energetically, I see forgiveness is the same as gratefulness. I mean, literally the same. Ooh, I never thought about that. Being with what is. Mm. It's being with what is. And, And gratefulness is so, I mean, it's ridiculously powerful energetically. It's just, but like the same color, the same energy, if I call it gratefulness, it just, it helps so much to enjoy the rocky roads as well as the smooth ones. You've spoken a lot about um, amusement. And those moments when, I'll just give an example, right? For some reason, the dog decides that their dinner isn't going to be in their stomach any longer. Okay. <laughs> Right? Can you just sort of laugh? Right? It's big and it's messy and you're trying to get them off the carpet. And I realized why they do that on the carpet because it's like grass. Right? Mm. You always wonder, oh, why aren't they just doing it on the floor, where, you know, the hardwood floor where it's easy to clean up? But no, <laughs> they, they choose the carpet, the, be- the shag carpet. <laughs> it's so difficult to clean. Uh, it's because the shag carpet is like grass. So, uh, you know, can, can you, in that moment of cleaning up, you know, something that you can't, you can't leave it there, can you be grateful? Can you be amused by it? <laughs> it's not easy. It's not, not easy. easy. Amused. It's not, you know, none of this is that we're talking about is easy, but can we build the muscle? Are yeah. we willing to build the muscle? Are we willing to choose it? Are we willing to, to, to practice it? Are we willing to be it? I mean, that's the question. That's all this. It's like, it, none of this is like falling off a log for most of us, but eventually it can be. Eventually, you know, like I look at the Dalai Lama, he's just this huge gift. And that man is like amusement on legs. And he's got a lot heavier load than anyone I know. 
Mm. And he is joy. He is amusement. Mm. Um, you know, and there's times he has terrible things happen and he's not laughing. Because, you know, because he's sad. But most of it, his default, he's practiced. Mm. And his, he is amusement in my world, from my perspective. That's beautiful. And with that idea, let's take a short break. Let's give a shout out to our sponsor. Thank you, We Are Historically, for making this show possible. Welcome back. We're talking about neutrality and amusement. And Wendy shared that in her idea that the Dalai Lama actually is is living that. He is amusement embodied. And he has, for certain, a very difficult history. Uh, his, the history of his life is incredible. Uh, and yet he can still live in amusement. That's amazing. Um, we're talking about forgiveness and gratitude and how they're the same flavor and taking baby steps in the direction of our goal. And those baby steps are helping us to build the muscle to take bigger steps and to move with more confidence. Mm-hmm. I'd like us to take a quick moment and talk about how leaving our pain in the past is so beneficial to us moving forward and progressing toward our goals, realizing our goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, pain, uh, you know, there's the, it, my understanding is that pain is experienced in the body, whether it's emotional or physical, very similarly. Mm. And, um, it's just pain. As I, when I read it, it's just pain. I, I have to look to see what kind it is. But, but the, I believe the mistake that we make is that we keep reliving it. Mm. Whatever for pain there was, we, have, we live in the story of it and we re-stimulate um, the experience of it instead of letting it go. That get caught. And that, yes, it keeps us stuck. And yes, it keeps us not noticing or going toward our goals. It also keeps us not, it keeps us re-injuring our actual life and body. Yes, I have to jump in and say, this is so true. And I have a great example because I was cutting an avocado, it must be uh, five years ago now, and it slipped and cut my knuckle. And I had been focusing on healing it and went to the doctor because it was so deep and they decided to stitch it up. So when I got home and I was laying in bed, my mind was doing this amazing thing and it began remembering the events that led up to it. It remembered the feeling of the cut. It remembered, right, the blood and holding it up, you know, the whole thing. And when it was remembering that incident, my finger throbbed. It actually throbbed and hurt. However, if I didn't think about those events, but focused on my cut being complete and healthy, and my body um, being healed, it didn't hurt. It didn't throb. And the doctor thought for sure I was going to need pain medication And I didn't think twice about it. So she gave me the prescription. I was like, what do I need this for? She said, it's really going to hurt. And the truth is it did hurt if I was thinking about the injury. It was like reproducing Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. pain of the injury. And I let that go and focused on my body being whole, my body being healthy. And I was work. I had four stitches and I was working the next day and it didn't split open and it didn't bleed. It was amazing. And it didn't hurt when I was, of course, I covered it, right? I, I wore gloves, mm-hmm. but I was able to do everything I needed to do without a problem. Yes. Yes. It's like magic. Yes. It really is like magic. But it's the other side of what we talked about um, when we talked about worry and we talked about um, Greg Luganus and, and going through, bringing our bodies through visualizing something happening. It's real for the body when we're visualizing it. 
And mm. so it's really helpful to own this, that we are re-stimulating ourselves about pain or fear or whatever. And I'm not saying never heal it. I'm not saying put it in a shallow grave and pretend it's dead. I'm not saying that. Mm. Like there's ways that we can work to heal and transform all these things consciously, but like to sit in bed or sit, you know, not working and, and go over and over and over it, it just digs us in and it really is harmful for our, our body and soul yes. to do that. And, and, and also like, I really have this, um, I have this little vignette I really like, which is I have this desk in this picture, I have a desk and it's full of telegrams, which are uh, information from the body, tons and tons of information from the body. There's the physical information and there's the emotional information. And it's just like piled up like this. Cause I'm not processing any of it. Mm. I'm not dealing with any of it. And so part of what I do in my work is I help people clear the desk and not be trying to operate through a desk that's like this. So we clear the desk and then it's clear and then we get new body information, emotions, yes. physical, inf we get, oh, you can't miss it. Oh, I'll act on that. I'll act on that because it's not like all this. We can't act on this. We can, oh, you're scared. Okay. Okay, body. We're going to, okay, we won't walk down the street. We'll walk down the next street or we're going to walk down the street, but I'll hold your hand and I'll say, pay attention. We're okay. I, I promise. Right? Like it's that easy, but we, we, instead we torture our bodies. That's the suffering. It's the suffering with all this stuff. And then we continue to not take care of it. Right. It's a terrible thing that we do. Um, and that's, I'd love to come full circle about that. That's exactly what you're talking about when you die to yourself a little bit. Yes. Because I had to set aside the memory and the experience of being cut. Yes, it happened. I'm not, I didn't deny my body that it happened, but I chose not to focus on it because that was perpetuating it. Yes. So when you clear the desk, you're allowing yourself to die to all those little things that will capture you and and hold you and prevent you from um, seeing clearly, from experiencing clearly, from being present, from being in the now. Yes. Yeah. And so there's there's that. There's all the emotions from the past. And we, you know, this is a, a sub sub theme we're in about the hindrances to choosing. And so I just want to rattle some ideas off because, you know, Chris. Tom, yeah, let's do it. We've got, <laughs> we've got a few minutes. You know, left. so yeah. we've, we've talked about um, emotions and there's also just beliefs that don't serve us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, and some, some, sometimes those beliefs are outright, outright lies. They're yeah. just things that we believe that are just not true or just not true in present time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and speaking of, of ideas, you know, there's programming, which is what I call other people's beliefs, other people's expectations and desires that we take on. Yeah. Um, that can lead us not where, who we are and what we're here to do. They can lead us way off. Um, and, and then we talked a lot today about what I call like the friction. There's just so much friction and resistance and no in our space to say yeah. hello to and to yeah. be with and to listen to and to honor and to, to allow to shift. Um, so that's just a small fraction of like the kinds of things, but it, it helps to put names to these things. Like people, mm -hmm. I find people like to talk about the ego. Like it's like all the bad things are the ego. <laughs> and it's like that's a that's like some mountains too big for me like yeah. but i can t i can start to say hello to the lies that aren't true in my space i can start to say hello to the programming from other people that that aren't mine like it helps for me to 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 be granular about it mm. um and um and the ego is just trying to help you know just it's just, it's true and it has a purpose Right. Our ego has a purpose and I truly see it as a distinguishing purpose. Right. It's designed to compare and contrast. 
and and for us to make decisions. Do I wear the blue pants today or the khaki pants today? Right? That's the purpose of it. Yeah. So allowing it to shift is important, but how? Mm. That's what I care about in my ministry. How do I allow it to change? Besides making it bad and wrong and resisting it, which gets me nowhere. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. How do I actually change? Oh, I say hello day by day to the little things that don't work in my life and allow them to shift. Yes. You build the muscle. I build the muscle. The, you yeah. build the muscle of real realizing. Mm -hmm. So seeing what's real, knowing, choosing a goal. Even if you don't know your purpose, you can choose a goal. And that's yeah. the thing. Even in science, they say an object that's moving continues to move unless an obstruction is placed in front of it. So movement is so important. Because as you're stepping toward, even if it's not the goal, you'll at least see if you can continue going to, in that direction and, and you'll get direct redirected and it's all good. You're still moving. You're not in stasis. Mm -hmm. Do you have a closing remark you'd like to leave? I do. You know, I do. I got, I got pretty uh, stuck in, and sick and for quite a while. And, Part of the reason that I did is because I was choosing goals out of the kinds of things we're talking about, out of ego, out of programming, out of shoulds, out of my own like intellectual idealizations, instead of going deep in my soul mm. and noticing who am I really and what do I really want, instead of going deep into my um, body and its desires and saying, who am I really and what, what is my natural manifestation mm. and so that's like it's just a very important thing I feel like to be choosing my goals out of the deep self and the deep body and the deep spiritual information instead of these ephemeral like I want to be successful according to the world or I want to mm. impress this particular person or whatever looking inward, inward. rather than looking outward yeah beautiful Thank you everyone for watching and thank you, Wendy, for joining me today. If this message has spoken to you, please tell us what's on your heart by leaving us a comment. And for more information about how you can live by heart, please go to livebyhearttoday.com. Be sure to like and follow this page and turn on notifications. We air every Thursday at 444 Pacific time. Next week, we continue the conversation and so until then, from our heart to yours, we are creating a better tomorrow because we live by heart today. And that concludes this portion of Live by Heart Today. Thank you for watching. Join us every Thursday at 444 p.m. for another episode of Live by Heart Today. Let's give a shout out to our sponsor. Thank you, We Are Historically, for making this show possible.